Well, welcome everyone to the Orangeburg Board of Commissioners regular meeting November 16. At this time, we'll ask the City Clerk Beth Davis to please call the roll. Commissioner Jeff Sanford. Here. Commissioner Mark Caslin. Here. Mayor Tom Watson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Larry Maglinger. Here. Commissioner Bob Lynn. Here. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll have the invocation and the pledge by uh, Commissioner Jeff Sanford. Would you bow your heads with me while we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, we welcome you to this hour asking for your blessings and help as we are gathered together here. We pray for your guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us work together and encourage uh, each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be our best that we can be. We ask for these things in your name, Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we go to the next item on the agenda, I want to make a, an apology for last month or last whenever it was, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I failed to ask if anybody from the public would like to speak. Uh, even though it's at my discretion, I just plain forgot it. So uh, I'll try and do better. And if uh, we get to the end and you're going to be wanting to speak, you know, you could jump up, do some jumping jacks or something, give me a heads up that you're you're interested in speaking that way I won't forget you but last week for those that were here I apologize for doing that okay next item on the agenda 4a we're going to unveil the city of Orangeboro's Christmas card we have the one and only Aaron Kaiser here to help us uh, adorn this thing so Mr. Kaiser would you please go to the since you really like doing this uh, <laughs> Lee Long Okay, Aaron. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I worked all night on that, so tell them about the Christmas card, would you? Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, this, like every other year, <clears throat> I thought about Christmas as a kid to me. And for this one to be more of a classic Christmas with the uh, the old Coca-Cola style Santa Claus, because that's what I remembered uh, from being a kid. But also, I wanted to incorporate the bridge in the background, but not just the blue parts of the bridge, some of the new LED lights, and give it a more uh, 2021 feel to the to the old uh, 80s Santa Claus. Yeah. So, and. I'm a much better painter than a speaker, so I don't have uh, much to say about it after that. You're a good painter. Yeah. Thank you very much, Aaron. <laughs> Appreciate it. And we're blessed to have that talent in our community, I can tell you that. Next item on the agenda, 4B Western Kentucky Brewery Hop. Dave Kirk, visit Owensboro. And I'm a much better speaker than I have an artist. So <laughs> You're in good company, buddy. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. First off, before, uh, before I get into that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, just what's going on with Owensboro. Uh, you know, I think it's kind of a time right now where we can celebrate a little bit. Uh, you've got the Par 3 golf simulator that's just opened up. You've got Brasher's little Nashville that's rocking down on 2nd Street. Sports floor is getting ready to open at the convention center. Just declared us the bluegrass capital of the world. Music the Monod capital. Music capital. Bluegrass music capital of the world. Thank you, Mayor. And then, of course, you have the Monina Sleet Project uh, that, that will kick off tomorrow, which is long overdue, and I can't wait to see that. That's going to be incredible. And then the 12 days of Christmas. You look at this bridge. I think that's a little hint about what uh, Tim and, and his department have going on with that. So certainly a reason to celebrate. Uh, and another thing that we can celebrate is the uh, West Kentucky Brewery Hop. We'll go ahead and start with the video. I'm a visual person, and then we can kind of get into what, what it's all about. So I'll go ahead and roll that just when you have a sec. So 
So what this is, is it's a collaboration of nine different cities here in Western Kentucky. Uh, it's, it's 13 different breweries, all uh, that, that have craft beer that they offer in their communities. When you ask somebody that is a craft beer fan, it, it's not just about the beer, it's about the community. Healthy communities have craft breweries, and most breweries are family friendly, uh, and most of them specialize in food as well. I know certainly our breweries do that. So huge collaboration to get people to the western part of the state. Lexington has one, Louisville has one. We thought during the pandemic, this is one of my projects that I worked on, why doesn't Owensboro? We need to give people a reason to come here uh, in addition to all the many reasons that we already have. But while they're here, and if you look through your passport, I've, I've dropped a one on each uh, person's uh, desk there, you're gonna see that not only do we want you to come here for the craft beer, we want you to come here to check out the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum. Obviously Green River is going to be uh, having a very, very big year uh, next year when they when they launch their official bourbon. Uh, and then of course barbecue. You know, people do travel for food. I know we kind of poke fun at it a little bit, but culinary is a reason for people to come. So you give them that reason and they discover how much uh, they love Owensboro. Hopefully that means they want to move to Owensboro. Hopefully that means they want to work in Owensboro. Hopefully that means they're going to start a company in Owensboro. And hopefully that means that they'll bring other people to Owensboro. So just wanted to kind of let you kind of see what it is. As you can tell, Bowling Green and Paducah are the two other larger cities on this trail. Hopefully that will encourage people. You know, you don't have to complete it all at once. You can take your time. We hope you'll take your time uh, and uh, stay the night a couple nights. See what else the city has to offer. So just wanted to throw that out there. It's been uh, out there since October. That's when we officially launched it. Again, it's one of the largest collaborations in the state when it comes to tourism because it involves uh, eight other uh, cities here in the western part of the state. So just wanted to make sure that you guys knew about that and um, what it's doing for us. And uh, open it up for any questions about that or anything else you might have. I'll try my best to answer them. I'm a little tired. My wife's been out of work or has been out of town for work for the last four days and uh, God bless her. God bless her. It is hard work. I am tired. How old is he? Two years old. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> young people need to have young kids. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have any questions yeah. up here? Mayor, I got one. Okay, tonight if you'll just push your red button and say mayor so I won't have to be like I'm at a tennis match. That'll help me, okay? All right. Uh, Dave, you know, there's a lot of great things happening and, you know, I want to thank you and Mark and everybody with the CVB that's been, you know, providing opportunities for people to visit Owensboro and, and, and make us a destination location and marketing our, our area. And um, so I just want to say thank you and doing a great job for us. Appreciate Thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is to consider the minutes dated November the 2nd, 2021, November 9th, 2021. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries, thank you. Item 5B, I'll ask you to consider these board appointments. Police and Firefighters Retirement Fund Board reappoint our Elam to a one-year term effective January the 1st, 2022. Appoint Charles Hayden to a one-year term effective January the 1st, 2022. Grad Regional Transportation Committee, that's why he's got his tie on. We appoint Kevin Culligan to a one-year term effective January the 1st, 2022. Orangeboro Parks and Recreation Advisory Board appoint Jonathan Patton to a two-year term expiring November the 8th, 2023. And the Orangeboro Area Shelter and Information Services uh, OASIS reappoint Major Jason Winkler to a three-year term expiring December the 31st, 2024. So I'll make a motion to approve. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion about these board appointments? Sounds good. Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries, thank you. Item six is the second reading of an ordinance. There will be a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Davis. Thank you. You're welcome. Ordinance 15-2021, an ordinance annexing to the city of Owensboro certain unincorporated territory in the county of Davis, adjoining the present boundary line of the city being property located at 5369 Old Hartford Road, containing 43.988 acres, more or less, 
at the request of Deer Valley Subdivision, LLC, publicly read for approval on second reading the 16th day of November, 2021. Okay, I'll accept a motion for approval, please. Second. Motion. Second, okay, good. Uh, City Manager, you have anything to discuss? Uh, just brief, Mary, second reading of an ordinance. Okay. Annexing uh, the, with, with the consensual annexation of approximately 44 acres at 5369 Old Hartford Road. The property is owned by Deer Valley Subdivision, which is an affiliate of Jago Homes. Of course, Jago, as we all know, is a long time builder and developer in our community. The company plans 137 homes in the development, which will be called Pebblewood, and we'll have a municipal order related to this project later in our meeting. Okay, any other discussion? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll have roll call. Commissioner Sanford? Yes. Commissioner Castlin? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Maglinger? Yes. Commissioner Glenn? Yes. Okay, motion approved and thank. And item seven, ordinance first reading, there will be no vote. Ms. Davis? Ordinance 16 2021, an ordinance revising the City of Owensboro Employee Handbook, Chapter 1000. Subchapter 1004, pay chart entitled Administrative Services, thereby establishing the position of customer service representative and further establishing the compensation of city employees and non-elected city officers in accordance with a personnel and pay classification plan as required by KRS 83A.070. Introduced and publicly read on first reading the 16th day of November, 2021. Thank you. City Manager, please. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. This is first reading of an ordinance adding the position of customer service representative, or CSR as we refer to it, to our pay charts. The pay charts include all full-time positions approved by the Board of Commissioners. While this change makes the CSR a full-time position, we've had CSRs as a part-time position here since 1999. Historically, we've had three part-time CSRs that collectively covered normal business hours. Because of the difficulty in hiring and retaining part-time positions, we're swapping three part-time positions for one full-time position. So again, it's not a new position in terms of uh, classification, but because it was not a full-time position, it's never been added to our pay chart. So it's more of a procedural cleanup to add the position to our pay chart. CSR is an important role because it is typically the front line is the first communication with citizens when they contact the city. CSR receives complaints and questions through calls, emails, the city app, and walk-ins. They assist with everything from complaints on property maintenance, sanitation, street issues, to get a citizens in contact with the correct department, and also providing support for special projects. We log approximately 14,000 calls and contacts each year. Any other discussion? Just tell me what you want to speak. And we'll okay. Just put that well, on I turned it on earlier. You won't have to look me. over there each time. Okay. Thank you. So the number they call is 270-687-4444. That hasn't changed, right? That's correct. This position typically answers the city action line, okay. in addition to emails and uh, submissions through our app and other avenues. Correct. Thank you, Nate. Okay. You, You're welcome. Okay. And we'll move to 7B, please. Ms. Davis. Ordinance 17-2021, an ordinance amending the annual budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021 and ending June 30, 2022, and amending ordinance 7-2021 to receive third round of CARES funding, receive and appropriate funds for downtown Christmas lighting, fund transition of three non-full-time customer service representative positions to one full-time customer service rep position, receive funding and providing for the construction of three tennis courts and to provide for purchase of a pole camera from the state drug fund. Introduced and publicly read on first reading the 16th day of November, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Pagan. Uh, yes, to just reiterate what the city clerk read, this is first reading of an ordinance containing a handful of amendments to the budget for the current fiscal year. The amendment includes the following, recording the CARES Act revenue that we received in the third round uh, just recently. A potential partnership for additional tennis courts at Center Court. At the work session last week, Tim Ross discussed sponsorships from Big Rivers Electric Co-op and Green River Distillery for downtown Christmas lighting. 
The funding from the companies and expenditures of the funds is incorporated into the amendment. The swapping of three part-time CSRs for one full-time as discussed in the previous item and the use of restricted funds to purchase a camera for the police department. So Mayor, it's just an assortment of cleanup items that have developed over the last four months. Okay, any discussion up here? I would ask you, what is the amount of this extra amount of CARES funding? Oh, excuse me, I blindsided you on that. No, no, I should it, have asked you that. We were prepared. It, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's all good, Mayor. Um, it's $445,482. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Good enough. We'll move on to municipal orders. Ms. Davis. Municipal Order 40-2021, a municipal order authorizing and directing the mayor to execute a memorandum of agreement with Deer Valley Subdivision, LLC, providing for the consensual annexation of unincorporated property located in Davis County at 5369 Old Hartford Road, containing 43.988 acres, more or less and further providing that the city shall reimburse Deer Valley Subdivision, LLC, 100% of the total ad valorem, excluding school tax, net profits, and general fund occupational tax revenues derived from the property over designated five-year periods, publicly read for approval on one reading the 16th day of November, 2021. Thank you. Uh, I recommend approve this uh, municipal order. Could I have a second, please? Second. second. Uh, City Manager, you have something to say? This municipal order approves the incentive agreement for the Jago Homes Old Hartford Road annexation that you approved earlier in this meeting. This is our typical incentive, except that allows for two five-year phases considering the size and build out of the development. Uh, each phase would be a 100% general fund incremental tax rebate. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. May I ask a question? Sure. Uh, so, City Manager, my question is, I've had some people ask me about these incentives. Why do we give them, you know, what, what's the benefit, that kind of thing? And so, can you give us kind of a thumbnail sketch as to why we do that? Yeah, a, a very good question. So, in this case, it's a, an annexation incentive. So, it's an incentivized incentivization to a uh, company to annex into uh, the city. So, typically, it's either for annexations or for job growth or development. Uh, so the general idea is to rebate to the company a portion of the taxes that they generate. So if the project were not to occur, the tax revenue or the tax growth wouldn't occur. And so it's to share and that growth with them as an incentive and then to align the interests of the city and the business or the developer. So the more they generate, the more we get, but the more they can get back as a rebate as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 9, City Manager Items. Uh, Mayor Angela Wanninger will present the October financial report. Ms. Wanninger, you are recognized. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so if we can get that pulled up on the screen on the overhead. Don't look at me. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, my PowerPoint presentation will be um, on the general fund activity for the month of October and the four months that ended October. And if you would like more detail, please see page three of the financial packet. So for the first slide is um, just for the current month of October, our actual revenues were $8,952,972, which was higher than budgeted revenues of $8,924,157. This is a result, results into a positive variance of $28,815. This is primarily due to receiving the third round of the CARES funding in the amount of $445,482. It is also due to higher occupational license fees, partially offset by timing and insurance license fees. Our next slide is the year-to-date revenues uh, for the month of October. Total actual revenues of $25,600,521 were higher than budgeted revenues of $23,566,389 for a positive variance of $2,034,132. This variance is primarily due to timing and property taxes, 
higher occupational license fees, as well as the receipt of the CARES funding. This is offset by timing and insurance license fees. Our next slide uh, represents the current month of October expenditures of $4,540,298, which were higher than budgeted expenditures of $4,933,308 for a variance of $393,010. This is primarily due to timing in maintenance and outside services. Our next slide is for the year to date October, four months ended October, actual expenditures of $25,006,975 were less than budgeted expenditures of $26,889,207 for a variance of $1,882,232. And this is basically due to timing and, and basically all of all the categories of expenditures that we have um, thus far. Uh, with the exception of personnel services, we have uh, savings of $245,000. In our last slide of the night, the city's monthly revenues and expenses are cyclical. This is the nature of our finances. Expense expenses typically outpace revenues in the warmer months when outdoor activities are in full swing. Likewise, we have months where revenues outpace expenditures, such as in the months of October and November due to collection of property taxes. As the slide shows, you can see how the green line is way high and the red line, which is expenditures, is, is low. So um, we're, we're about where we budgeted, look, we're better than we budgeted to be. So it's all good news. We're in good shape, Mayor. Good job. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, I'll make a motion to file a report for audit. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? No, no being counted up here. All right, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Wanniger. Excellent job as always. You're welcome, Mayor. Item 9B is personnel appointments. Uh, city Manager. Sarah Henry, probationary, full-time, non-civil service, promotional appointment to refuse truck driver with sanitation, effective November 21st. Samuel Bodine, regular, full-time, non-civil service, appointment to green superintendent with Parks and Recreation, effective November 21st. Caleb Gray, regular, full-time, non-civil service, appointment to sanitation manager with sanitation department, effective November 22nd. And Ryan Morton, regular, full-time, non-civil service, appointment to push <clears throat> to bus driver with transit department effective November 23rd. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve these appointments. Could I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Any more comments, city manager? Uh, I do have one tonight, uh, Mayor. We recently received notice that the city's annual comprehensive Financial report for last fiscal year has received the certi Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting from the Government Finance Officers Association. Just want to take a moment to acknowledge our finance staff, in particular, Danae Galloway, Tim Goff, Whitney Brown, Carrie Haynes, of course, under the leadership of Ms. Angela Wanninger. And so I'd like to see them get acknowledged for their good work, as you know. So it's, they do great work. It's good to see it acknowledged by an independent third party. It also shows how good our community is doing too, doesn't it? Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's another thing. Okay, item 10 is communication from elected officials. Commissioner Sanford. None tonight, thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Castlin. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. On uh, Monday, I was uh, fortunate to get to spend an hour or two with a group of uh, 25 students from OHS. Uh, Drayson Williams is a mentor for a class and he had asked if I would b go ahead and host the class and let them come to City Hall and see how city government worked and talk it over. Uh, I also invited Mr. Nate Pagan to meet with them and we talked about our duties as city commissioner and city manager here in the chambers. And anyway, it was just inspirational and encouraging to see such a fine group of young students 
and to see the interest that they had in the local politics and all of the uh, uh, other, and were so aware of issues going on in their schools and the neighborhoods and to get to discuss it with them. But uh, anyway, it was, uh, like I said, very inspirational and positive meeting and I encourage them to go ahead and stay focused on being a part of the community and being a part of uh, politics in the future. And also, uh, I know that we've talked uh, briefly about the curfew in the past. Uh, in the future, I'd like to go ahead and kind of bring that up and have a discussion about that. We've had, um, I've had several people talked to me that said that they would like to see us possibly change the curfew. And anyway, I'd like to see that brought up in the future. City so Manager, you have a comment? Yeah, uh, Mayor, thank you. Commissioner, that's uh, happy to, to do so. Chief and I have discussed a little bit. I know he's out of town for the December work session. So if it's okay with, with you and the mayor and the commission, we may have that on the January work session for a discussion item. Okay, very good. And I was glad to see you and the city manager give those young people some real positive information about what's going on in our community and I appreciate y'all doing that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind everybody next Friday uh, the 12 days of Christmas will begin and Tim Ross has put together several unique events and I think uh, uh, you'll enjoy it and so I hope to see everyone out. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Glenn. Yes, just a few items. I uh, want to congratulate Friends of Sinners. They had a, a, a fundraising event, uh, a live fundraising event uh, that Commissioner Maglinger and I attended and very inspiring hearing the testimonies of all the men and women who are going through their Christ-centered rehab uh, program and they're expanding to a new facility. Um, Art Museum had an event that I attended. Uh, they seem to be doing well and moving in the right direction. Uh, we've still got three of our four high school football teams in action. We're down to the top eight. We've got Owensboro Catholic playing Lexing Lexington Christian on Friday night, Davis County. It goes to St. X. And then if you want to take in a game, go to Owensboro High School's Rash Field and watch them play Bullet Central. Uh, but that's quite an accomplishment. Three teams, three divisions, the top eight in the state, and with more opportunity to come. Uh, two of those teams, all those teams have a great chance to advance. But even if they don't, what a great season, and congratulations to those young men and their coaches. Uh, that's all I've got, Mayor. Thank you. Item 11, open public forum. Members of the audience are invited to address the city commission on any matter of public concern that was not on tonight's agenda. Comments are limited to issues within the scope and responsibility of this commission. Commission meetings are held to conduct city business for the business of Orangeboro citizens and taxpayers. At this time, anyone who wishes to address the city commission, please make their way to the podium and limit their remarks to three minutes or less. Since the item is not on the agenda, no response is required by city staff or the commission, and the mayor reserves the right to extend time to the speaker. I just wanna thank you guys for having us tonight. My name is Trisha Shiver, and I am the coordinator of the Owensboro People's Christmas Parade this year. <laughs> Thank you. I am a widowed mom with two kids, and um, you know, trauma does funny things to your memory, so I don't have a lot of childhood memories, but the one thing that I do remember is going to the parade every single year. And uh, my children are kind of getting to that age where they're starting to form memories. They don't have a whole lot but you know, we missed last year, um, and that was a big thing for me to miss. And I didn't want there to be a second year of them having to miss that. I think the kids in our community deserve a little bit more normalcy. Um, and it's, it's a memory that I'm looking forward to building with my kids, and now everyone else's kids in the community too. Um, I've got a few visions for it. I'm trying to keep it very local-centered. Um, I think just about everything we've got going is local based, small business. We have several families who have contacted us just because they want to be in a parade. Um, so that's really cool because I'm making kids' dreams come true with that. You know, it's something I wanted to do when I was a kid but had no reason to. And now these kids can and their parents are making it happen. It's a really cool thing to see. Um, 
and another big part is I kind of wanted to show the entire city what happens when our people all come together for one common cause. Um, it's, it's something that's really near and dear to a lot of people. Um, there was a lot of disappointment. I personally didn't know that there was a parade committee. So that was a new thing whenever that was dropped that they weren't doing it. Um, and so I made one smart aleck comment and people ran with it and so here we are. Um, I think we have about 50 units lined up for the parade already um, and that is before any kind of community outreach. We haven't gone to any small businesses or anything like that yet. Um, we've got a professional Santa ready to come in for the end of the parade. Santa will be there so the kids can look forward to that too. There's that little piece of tradition that we get to keep and we are trying to keep it as close to traditional as possible. It's going to be December 18th. I know that's closer to Christmas than it normally is. But we're working on a limited timeline with little to no experience with a parade. <laughs> so that is one thing I'm good at is throwing something together and learning how to do it last minute because I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so here we are. Um, but we're going to do it December 18th at 430. It's going to be on 2nd Street like it traditionally is. And um, I would encourage anyone in the community to come out and join us and be a part of it. And um, we've had several people mention, you know, what are we going to do if there's excess funds? Because there are a lot of expenses that come with it, as we're finding. And there are fortunately a lot of small businesses that are really stepping up to the plate and saying, hey, we want to make this happen. We believe in what you're doing. We want to see it happen, too. We've got you covered no matter what that means. So that's a really cool thing to kind of watch happen. Um, but we would like to see a lot more community support. I want to see everybody from Owensboro just kind of come together for the Christmas spirit in this one thing. So this is kind of our official announcement. We met with Tim Ross last night, and um, I think everything's pretty well set in stone, and we hope to see everybody on December 18th at 4.30. Well, we all thank you from the bottom of our heart. And you got to be careful about those smart aleck comments because you can get elected to something pretty quick uh, if, you, if, if you're not careful. So I've had but, several people tell me that's the next step, so we'll see. But God bless you for doing this. this is, I'm excited for you, and I love the fact that it's closer to Christmas and not so early, quite honestly. I think it gives it a little more pop, too. Right. I, I do, too. It's, uh, it's a little more Christmassy and not so Thanksgiving, so yeah. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Can we pick you out in the crowd somewhere? You're going to have a little crown or something? Just on? look for the red hair. Red hair. I, I got, got stopped at Sam's Club three times from people I don't even know on Sunday asking about it. So oh, you're the redhead with the Christmas parade. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Hi, yes, Reggie sir. Helm, 2931 Christie Place. I am the chairperson of the Shively York Neighborhood Alliance. And we've been kind of a, of a dead of alliance for the last few years. We never could get a quorum. But over the last couple of years, we now have got a quorum. We're really active. We're having a lot of people show up at our meetings. Uh, we average just nine people for a quorum and that many in, in the audience. That's pretty rare for Neighborhood Alliance. So we're real proud of the progress. We've been walking around handing out pamphlets. I personally have done about 400 homes and we got 5,000 in our neighborhood. And uh, we're not gonna meet again until February 1st, but at the last meeting I promised a lot of people that we would be the board members and would come here and make uh, couple of concerns you already know about but we wanted to make it public uh one is the uh flooding uh york uh, area you got a problem with flooding over there yeah just yeah. a little bit yeah <laughs> we may have to that build camera? that transient boat dock over there but uh anyway uh, that's one you guys know about it i've contacted you and thank you for the response for that it's uh it was immediate everybody was great thank you uh but that's something that we're going to be a pride in your side uh and then also, uh, I don't know if you're aware, why I was, I was in that area for three days hanging, uh, handing out pamphlets and... Uh, you can run for something too. I've run for the county <laughs> line many a time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they, uh, the pickleball uh, area over there, while I was over there, several people stopped me. When I got to the park, it's a wonderful thing, okay? We, when they first brought it up to me, I thought, you're complaining about people being physical, you know, I can't support you on that. But when I got over there and see, that's a real small park, maybe a couple of 
yards basically and then uh but it's when i was walking in neighborhoods you know and one, one gentleman said well if you want to do something for us stop that you know that cl- it, it, it's a pop it's a popping yeah and uh so when i got over there it was gosh i bet i counted 27 cars and and the neighbors told me it's like that from 7 30 to 8 o'clock every day in the summer and we we had uh, because of COVID, we had a couple meetings at that park and it was packed in i actually put a sign i thought i'd about our meeting at the park we went to pick it up after the meeting we couldn't see it because all the automobiles <laughs> so a lot of people wanted us to bring that up i know you guys have heard the issue uh but it's it, it seems to be a real concern and uh, legit at first i didn't think so but after i was around there and, and heard from a lot of the neighbors so they want maybe find a happy medium with the pickleball club or some kind of way t- there's no parking and uh, so that's just a concern that we're going to be uh, continuing to update about and then one last thing uh, in our see it's I guess that would be our southeast corner of our neighborhood there was a couple shootings there on Sherm and then there was one on the corner of Booth and uh, Lewis Lane there was injuries on one and the other some detectives went up and down the street wanting video cameras uh, and one of our board members was right there so there's a lot of elderly people there and so I've been contacted so they would like to know what to update now I've had uh, Officer Zane Glass, he comes to our meetings and he's been wonderful. But again, like he said, it's under investigation. You can't get, but you know, if we can get an update and assure it, it's not to let people know it's not gang activity or something. It's just, it's just to calm them down because you know, I, you guys probably hear it, but I'm starting to hear a lot of it too. So anyway, uh, those are something you know we're going to be updating. Kevin Colling, Collingnan, is that how you pronounce it? He came to the. Uh, the meeting and did a presentation told us he's have a model made he's real nice and, and worked with us but he was nice he was cordial you, somebody he was cordial and, and well you know he was in front of an angry mob of course he's part of an angry mob yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway uh appreciate what you guys done and in quick reaction but those are things we'll be still be be concerned about and be asking questions and uh any updates you can give us uh, our facebook page we started is starting to grow and uh we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, activity in in our. Uh, yeah, Adrian keeps me pretty much informed about what's going on in there. Yeah, she does an excellent job. She's, I, yeah, she's, she's just great. awesome. Really she's is. Yeah, so, very yeah. concerned and yeah, and, and quite she, honestly, I've gotten probably a whole bunch of emails, and it's about 40, 60 um, bad versus liking the pickleball. And I go to the health park in the morning at five. And they play in the gym. It sounds like grenades going off in yeah. the gym. Yeah, and so I can I see living right in front of that eight, you know, yeah, hours I understand a day, that, every day. You know, and the parking issue. So, yeah. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll work with our. Sure. You know, we're not trying to blow anybody's, you know, high there. You know, enjoying all that stuff. But you know, we want them to. You know. Well, Amanda Rogers, our parks yeah. superintendent, so she's yeah, on I, top of it. But there's a, a group of concerned citizens that'll come. The, the, they're going to get involved too. I said, you know, it's going to take us and you, and you know, there's power in numbers. So, so we Just are. Just like this lady said, it. Yeah, we're right. all in this together. Yes, yeah, right. So, you know, they sick this on you. So that's why we're here tonight. But we're also uh, this is our last meeting till the first of February. Isn't that where you kind of live close there, Commissioner Castle? Yeah. Yes, sir. Matter okay. of fact, yeah, I handed that's him one of the right pamphlets. There. That's yeah. the guy right well, there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I actually saw Re- Richie when he was handing out the uh, <laughs> yeah. the pamphlets yeah. and, and brought it up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But but I, anyway, uh, this is our last meeting until first year. So I just want to wish you all a happy holidays and, and thank, thank you, you for everything thank you for and being, being a quick here. reply I appreciate, appreciate it. it thank you anyway okay thank you mayor and commissioners uh my name is Robert Morris I live in uh 727 Maple Avenue <clears throat> and I'm here to uh talk about a tree that's growing behind my house in what I believe is uh city property uh per PVA and per the grounds uh department uh it is on city property um it's a humongous gum tree uh and uh, i 
for the last six years, I haven't paid much attention to it, uh, except for raking up gumballs by the gallons and and twisting my ankle while I'm mowing the grass and and, and uh, just you know. But that was no big deal until finally um, a limb fell on my garage a couple months ago and did about eight thousand dollars worth of damage and um, and then recently large limbs have been falling off into my backyard five minutes after I would come in from mowing or whatever so now it's you know I've had some people look at it and one uh, tree guy uh, it was pretty funny he called it the widow maker and uh, but um, anyway I contacted after the the limb fell and hit my neighbor's garage and his yard and mine and did a lot of damage to my garage and my privacy fence I started thinking man we got to do something about this tree somebody's gonna get hurt I live in the city so I'm surrounded by apartments church uh, neighbors and this tree if it falls it's gonna reach out and 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 get to you um, so I reached out to uh, PVA they gave me a sheet that showed me that the uh, the tree is in the city alleyway that I believe is owned by the city it hasn't I know I understand I, I tr I'm trying to understand the paper ordinance things and and all those kinds of things but it, it, the PVA sheet shows that it is on city property the pen that I found that marks my backyard shows that it is on city property um, and uh, so I, I went through the chain of command went to the grounds and uh, and talked to uh, several people there and uh, you know I was told that uh, well we're gonna get bids to uh, get the tree cut down and they've got 10 days to get back with us and uh, we'll decide what we're gonna do after that well we, we you know 10 days went by month or so went by and I finally contacted grounds again and uh, asked them about the bids and they hadn't gotten any and so I said well I got a call back from Kevin uh, and uh, he told me that they had gotten a phone bid that day for eighteen thousand dollars to cut the tree down which the trunk is five foot this tree is I mean it's the holy grail of trees and uh, but uh, eighteen thousand dollars I thought goodness gracious I'm glad we're loaded because I, I hope maybe you guys could come up with a little bit of money to do that I believe he's talking to you Angela yeah Mr. Wanger, <laughs> thank you if you could you know, scratch a little something off of there for me but anyway uh, the tree is five foot the trunk uh, and it does extend out well I reached out to the church next door because Willie my next door neighbor and I were having some problems with their big widow makers and uh, Bishop David was awesome his church was awesome they called back Willie lives in the house that he rents the house that the church owns and uh, those trees are gone now and uh, they got three bids and uh, the guy that's doing it his is a fraction of what that tree that that the bid the one phone call bid you got from one trade contractor and these trees are four and a half foot wide trunks and they've got limbs everywhere too the front one's gone now thank God because every time we back out well Willie had a limb fall through his his awning where they were sitting and so but you know I, I'm not here to uh, you know I lived with this tree forever and ever until I started you know wanting to uh, you know it, it, it hit my garage and then I said I'm gonna find out who owns this tree so I'm sure there's gonna be argument who owns the tree who owns the alleyway uh, the tree uh, is causing I mean talk about flooding and, and whatnot in the area and, and, and th I mean this tree is in the swell the, the alley swell at my backyard floods when it rains hard because of this, the obstruction of this tree and probably all the stuff that's grown up in that alleyway also and then neighbors have built on that area but this, the grounds committee actually came out there and uh, and said we're not going to cut the tree down but we're going to trim all the the dead out of it and they came out and took three branches out I mean from what I could see they they cut three branches out of the tree and um, 
So I, I, I just wanted to, uh, uh, my objective here and goal is to get that tree cut down. And, uh, and I think the tree can be cut down a lot cheaper than $18,000 uh, by the guy that called in the phone bid. Um, I, and, I, and I'd be happy. I know you're, you're saying you don't have any hand in this. Well, yeah, I do. I mean, my grandkids and I, we can't even go back there. I mean, I'm, I'm afraid to even get them back there now because of, of, of this tree. Okay. And so. Uh, uh, can, we, can I just interrupt you for yes. a second? And we'll ask the city manager to comment on this. Cause All right. Well, uh, thank you. I'm not familiar with the issue here. Right. So let me do a little research and I'll follow up with you soon. Okay. Is that appropriate for you, sir? That's city, awesome. ma city manager. I don't know when you say grounds people, I'm really unclear. Well, engineering department. Okay. They call it says engineering department, but then you talk to ground. I talked to one person and she, she was very nice, but didn't get anything done. I talked to a, a, another fellow and I don't want to, you know, that's call okay. I understand. And, yeah. and, but all I, public I work hit, staff. it yeah. was, it was, uh -huh. All within the public works department. It's all in Different the public divisions. works department. So right. it, let the city it, manager, he's a very good person, and let him work on that. And if you'll leave. I if, have contacted the, the city attorney uh, in, in letter, and he called me back and talked to me about it also. Uh, and that's what I did with the church because I was worried to death about those two trees and that, and, and, and that tree. And, you know, when the insurance guy came by, he goes, you need to contact these people in the letter and let them know. That these trees are dangerous and they're a nuisance and that's why i had letters yeah i, I cut down eight gum trees because i got tired of sharpening my lawnmower blade all the yeah, time yeah i mean this I mean, tree i couldn't hardly walk out there it's like on marbles this this tree is their grandfather yeah well I'm sure you. <laughs> i want no part of that booger i'll tell you yeah. that so but the big Let argument it, is whose land is it on Who we'll, does fig this? we'll figure that? it out yeah and, and we'll get you a, a solution as soon as we possibly can okay thank you very much appreciate you coming and being civil about it thank, thank you. you very much Yes, so, sir. My name is John Fowler. I'm at 851 Parkway Drive. Um, a pastor here in Owensboro, Kentucky. Born and raised, went to Davis County, graduated, graduated from Kentucky Wesleyan. Moved away, came back in 95 to pastor church. Been here ever since. Um, about four years ago, I started trying to call pastors together to do things to better our community. Uh, we as churches tend to operate in our own little places and do good things, but um, my thought was is if we worked together, we could do more. Um, so we just began to look for proactive ways to do that. And, and especially the last couple of years, um, we've tried to figure out ways we could do things for the community just to show the love of God to people. And the more we did that, the more we realized it really does work. When you work together, you get more done. And um, so last year, we actually did a forum for the commission race, and I got to meet a lot of the candidates. And Pastor Andre Bradley, um, first of all, it's a coalition of churches. It's pretty large. Um, small churches, large churches, every kind of denomination you can think of. Um, and we've really been trying to almost mend bridges in some ways, because sometimes I'm just being straight. Uh, churches, uh, there you go, there you go. And uh, so it's not easy work, but uh, we're getting there. So Andre Bradley, myself, uh, had the privilege of spending a lot of time with Jeff and Mark. Uh, they gave us some time, and we just began to talk about some of the things that were on our hearts to see change. And it sort of was bred out of all the things that were going on last summer with all the race uh, strife that was in uh, all over the nation. Uh, and we had a little bit of that rise up here as well. Um, that's where our discussion started recently. And we really believe we've come up with some good solutions to deal with specific acts of racism in our community because nobody wants to admit it because none of us want to admit it's here, but it is because it's everywhere. Uh, not to get in debates about racism, but actually fix things that are racist. Um, and having those kinds of discussions are difficult. Uh, we'd have a room of, of diverse uh, members in it, and we had some really hard discussions, but what it did is it helped us to understand each other's worlds better. Uh, and so that's one area. Mental health is another area that I really believe we need to address. Um, mental health bleeds into things like homelessness and hunger and addiction and things like that. I guess what I'm bringing to you all tonight is, is, is we as a coalition of pastors would like to extend an invitation to you all to sit down and have a conversation about some things we really believe would work if we could work together. When we, I remember one thing Jeff said to us early on is, you know, one thing that the churches have that a lot of people don't have is boots on the ground. 
because the pastors in our group represent thousands and thousands of people in this community. Um, and we would just like to work together with our city government and county government for that matter, just to address these community issues and be proactive and see if together we can do more than we can separate. So I would just like to invite you guys to that conversation if you'd like to come. I welcome the opportunity. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have I forgotten anybody? James, you want to talk? You're good. Okay. All right. All right. Hearing no bus more business to come before this commission tonight. I want to thank all of y'all for coming. Thank you for ending on a positive note. I was afraid you had another gum tree in your backyard, and you know, because those things are those things are nightmares. I'm telling you. So. <laughs> so uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Could I have a second, please? Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned.